We're on. Thank you, Marcus, for, my, for making up for my um, disastrous failure at recording a, a Skype conversation. So, uh, hi guys, it's Rob Ringy here, who's doing very well. Um, today I've got a conversation with a friend of mine called Marcus. We go way back. He has lots of experience teaching in a secondary school in England or secondary schools. My experience has all been in primary schools, just jumping from job to job without any qualifications. Um, somehow, just the, the experience ended up counting as the qualifications. Yeah, so we've both done a lot of teaching and we're going to talk about mental health and teaching. Marcus, how are you, my friend? I'm very well, thanks, Rob. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. How are you? I'm just hydrating. <laughs> okay, that's extremely important, I hear. It is. It's is it taught in school? Where you are? Is it, is it what? Sorry. Is hydration taught in the school you're at currently? Uh, there are water fountains. Does that count? Are the kids aggressively or enthusiastically encouraged to use them? Um. Uh, well, I think actually probably one of the main issues is um, trying to convince them that they're not allowed to drink the, the cans and uh, bottles that they can buy in the cafe in the classroom. So if we're talking about hydration issues, that's the main battle battleground, I would say. There's not much that's, else. OK, that's the front line. That's the song. That's where it all goes down. OK, so Marcus, what do you think? What have you witnessed t teaching do to people's mental health in a, in a in a negative way? And we'll get and after that, a positive way. We'll start talking about it. because I I feel like I've seen like a level of stress and overwroughtness that I've not seen in other civilian jobs. You know, like obviously being a soldier, it, it's totally is far more stressful I'd imagine than a firefighter. But I did. I did read in a staff room. Obviously, they left it open. But, um, I don't know how legitimate the study was, but it was saying teachers are twice as likely to suffer from mental health problems, and the obviously the intense responsibility. Because when that door shuts and it's you and the kids, you're basically responsible for thirty lives, not yeah. just teaching and all that. Um, so, what negative impacts have you seen it have? Um, well, it, certainly, I, I think that uh, bears out, and I. You know, there, there are. It's important to say at the beginning, of course, that um, even in the in the industry, um, there'd be lots of different experiences for, for for different people. I mean, there's ever such a lot of variables, and I think that's one of the, and that's one of the issues possibly is the amount of variables in the situation. But there are lots of variables which mean that people could have a, a very positive experience. So. I think one of the main issues, really, and, and one of the one of the sources for stress is the fact that um, teachers are acutely aware or a lot of teachers are acutely aware that uh, ultimately their school will be judged on the performance yeah. of the individual faculties and the individual faculties might comprise just maybe four teachers or it might be as many as 14 teachers but it's still quite a small number where the performance of an individual still has that potential to be um uh significant wow so, and, so we're not we're not talking anything on near the scale of ofsted we're, we're talking groups of 14 teachers who who assess other teachers yeah, absolutely. Well, I I think well, that's that's the thing. I think there's I, th I think there's all sorts of different layers of of oversight, and I think um, that can lead a teacher to feel very um, unconfident in themselves because naturally, I think as human beings, um, we resent uh, judgment from others, especially if we sort of think that it's coming from a negative point of view, and so. Right. I, you know, and and I, and I stress that that's 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 obviously different for different people. I think the big thing is that ultimately, you said that you're responsible for a class of of thirty people, and and you put it in that moment of being responsible for for them, you know, their their welfare or how they interact yeah. with each other, and um, behaviour management in itself is 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 potentially a, a yeah, big. Let alone, their, let alone their life. You know, if they if they're very asthmatic and need the inhaler, or they need the shot, you know, yeah. for whatever. It's like that's the oh, whole. Even, be, even being the eyes and ears of of being that front line, where um, yeah. between the ages of 
you know, whether you're talking about beginning primary school at four or, or leaving sixth form at 18, um, you know, potentially you could be the person that sees that individual the most if you see them four times a week or if you're a fault teacher or something like that outside of their family circle and then the number of people who actually see them within their family circle so if you allow yourself to think about that in a in a in a in a way which is which is going to put you under pressure then then yeah there's there's a lot of responsibility there i mean in sort of legal terms schools are very um uh keen to stress to their staff um, that you are not in loco parentis so you are not actually responsible for um that student's well-being uh, uh overall um but 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 yeah definitely there's that potential to feel that responsibility for for young lives and to be constantly vigilant i think definitely okay do you think i imagine that varies temperamentally amongst people like if you're very high in compassion um you're gonna freak out over the welfare of your kids or if you're a bit, a bit lower in compassion a bit more disagreeable and um you know you, you might which might even be better for the, for the job in a way like the, like good psych psychiatrists can distance themselves from the yeah and not take on board all the problems of the of the um of their client so so you were saying about variables I guess there's an infinite amount of variables for everything, but did you mean variables in the classroom environment or variables in, in a teacher's own mind regarding their mental health? Yep, Mark's frozen. I lost you there. I'll temporarily. No worries. You're back now. You went, you went still. Perils of Skype. Yes, it told me a poor connection, which you know that's that's not true between us. Um, just to just to just to clarify, um, Marx is married to a lady. So, um, <laughs> did you did you? I read about this in an Aldous Huxley essay. Did you know about the school where they have the classes going on and the kids are allowed to walk around them and choose whichever ones their temperaments draw them to? Um, yeah. Do you, how, how do you view a school like that in comparison to pretty much every other school on the planet where there's, where there's a curriculum or, or a set of, the, it, it's, it's almost, like a martial discipline of, of they like it's, it's get, I think it's getting them used to work, you know, or military service. You're getting used to being told what to do and the uniform, and the eight hours a day, and the playtime schedule, and and all that. So how do you think? How do you think the um, curriculum t teaching? Do you think it's necessary? How do you think that would bear? Or would a non-curriculum based teaching work in reality? Do you think? Well, I'm naturally predisposed towards sort of a more rational outlook with it and i i feel uh, i find structure comforting so I, I i i definitely i find it hard to imagine a situation where you could organize the effective education of, of hundreds of thousands of children without um without having that framework but i certainly know that um you uh Oh, I, I, I certainly know that there, there are certain teachers where I've been, I've looked on them quite favourably and I've, been, I've admired them. I've thought that, you know, I've admired what they do. And a lot of what they've done is to emphasise introducing an element of choice for students. And some things are more manageable than others. But um, I, I think, obviously, uh, a curriculum is by its nature quite rigid and uh, I've got fairly I've got fairly strong opinions about the kind of academic curriculum which uh, forces students who uh, struggle with that side of things down a, a particular path which yeah. then loses I think years of potential um, knowledge building or, or learning in a in a different environment or in a different way and and so it could it could be said to not it doesn't only grate against their temperament it actually deprives them of time that could be spent developing in the right way yeah absolutely i, I think 
you know, that you, there are a number of kids who come out of school at 16 and then they're going and, and, and looking at that sort of uh, further education, possibly something more vocational. And it's almost yeah. like that time then has to kind of make up for the fact that they've sort of lost two or three years. And But on the flip side, I wouldn't ever sort of advocate for a, a situation which casts kids on an academic scrap heap really early. So sort of denies them the access to potentially, you know, whether it's like poetry in English or, 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 or anything really where they've got that opportunity to, you know, so it's, it's a really fine balance. I think um, the current, um, English government, their their drive towards an old fashioned curriculum does concern yes. me because I think it, I think it's based ultimately on an ideology which is uh, how great grammar schools were when they themselves were were educated and and, and modelling public yeah. uh, uh, state education on 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 public schools and things like that, which I, I just think is trying to square a circle. Ultimately, I think. Um, I think you need to give kids much greater choice in terms of what they can do from an earlier age and, and different pathways. Um, but, but yeah, I, th I think uh, I, I'm, I'm terrified of a, of a curriculum free school. I think that just I can't imagine myself within that framework. Or I can't imagine how it would work. Too Lord of the Flies or, or what? I think I, I do I do love the I do love it when you see educationists like Michael Rosen who basically yeah man keep talking you're frozen a bit but it's, oh it's, no it's all right. right it's okay it's okay it told me it lost connection then poor connection but can you hear me yeah I can hear you see you it's all good you were saying oh, about model through. Yeah, I, I, I do like sort of educational thinkers like Michael Rose and people like that who just who, who basically the biggest thing that they can say to the adults is just take a step back and let right. the children work things out for themselves. And I think, you know, that that's if you if you want to define good teaching, then I think there's even within a very sort of rigid curriculum framework. I think there's a, a lot of uh, uh, of that as a, as a component of just setting the kids up to point them in the right direction to to give them the right things to notice but then allowing them to observe it themselves and, right. and test their own ideas against this you know so this is one of the main yeah, reasons i, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't have experience i mean when it, you mentioned um, lord of the flies i think obviously that's the other side of it that help in that direction you know what man the signal the sig <laughs> the signal's going too dodgy right now so i think i think we'll call this the end the end of part one of what i hope will be more conversations <laughs> because at the minute well i could see 90 percent of it or more has been fine but at the minute you're sort of frozen like that for all I know, you may be talking over me, and I may be talking over you. Um, but <laughs> as soon as you unfreeze, I think we should we should stop this and resume again a different day. I think you're right about the time and the, and the yeah. internet. It's gone. It's yeah, gone I think I think, I think we ourselves with what time we do. I can't. <laughs> I hope people listen to him, but I can't. But I do. That's uh, that's it. That's a wrap. Yeah, I hope people be listening right now. Yeah.